Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Annie. Hello. Hi. So for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Yeah. So I'm Annie. I am from Finland originally, living in Zurich, Switzerland nowadays. I am an Azure MVP as well as a CNCF ambassador. So what those two essentially mean that I love sharing my knowledge on both Kubernetes and cloud and cloud native and container topics in general, both the conferences as well as like online um, news and activities and whatnot. I've also been the, um, I've been a track chair at KubeCon for a few times already. I have hosted a um, weekly live stream for CNCF, which is called Cloud Native Live since 2021. I've organized meetups since 2017 for CNCF and Kubernetes. I was a co-organizer for Finland. Um, what else? I always keep forgetting like half of the things that I've done, but like a lot of conferences, to be honest. I did 30 last year. So or actually it's, always a, it's always a question, like because what what's ha in fact it's a question I ask a lot of interviewees is like what's happening with the local community? Are things still does it feel like it's ramping back up or is it back ramped is everything back to normal post pandemic well i think for europe in general it's been um it's been quite good for a, quite a long time now so i think it's ramped up for sure like because the, the all the restrictions and all of these kind of gathering mm -hmm. with these restrictions were lifted a while ago already so i think it's quite normal now at the same time i think communities always change and like move and whatever they they never stay put which is the, the good part about community as well so i think there has been a lot of communities that have gone through a lot of changes after the pandemic that but that might also be due to like time passing and whatnot i also help out organizing the swiss meetups for cncf and kubernetes nowadays because my employer uh, vision where i'm the cmo um we organized and we've organized them from the beginning so i was very happy to jump into like uh, a swiss company as well who's been in, involved in the kubernetes space for such a long time well, well it's, i think that's where a lot of the uh you know the the user groups i think are struggling and, and part of it is like it's good and bad it's like uh, more of them are hybrid or virtual and so there's more of them and they're getting a lot of people that are dialing in but you know, a, 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 an incredibly powerful part of community is the in-person aspect of it. I think that's why, I mean, I'm glad to see events are ramping up. It's a little bit slower, but it's also happening in the U.S. and numbers are looking really good for some of these events. Uh, but it's for user groups, there's fewer people showing up in person. More people want to dial in. I mean, I think it's, it's yeah, it's a bit same in Europe as well because I think people got used to the easiness. So you know, you just open right. your laptop, you listen in. So I, those are like those changes are happening here as well. But there was a bit of a um, craze when like all the restrictions got lifted. Like all events were so full, so buzzing, so fun because everyone was just like so joyous to right. be gathered. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, desperate, joyous. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. the same. Yeah. The same, same emotion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, I guess that's the, the, the hard part is, is that, uh, you know, what we see for our user group here locally is that we, you know, more than half of the people are from out of the state, many from out of the country. And so how do you build the local community? And does, is that even as important as it was the local community versus anybody that's interested in it within that topic? But yeah, so that's, I know that's just a struggle a lot of groups have, have seen, but but you're right. I mean, I think events are getting back and back up to speed and more people reaching out. And, and there are more, the way to describe it, smaller events that are popping up as well. Yeah. So it's it's good to see that. So what are, so you, you talked a little bit about you know, like the topic. So what are your primary contribution types? Are you more of a writer, speaker, video content, community person? Yeah, so far, very much heavily on the speaking because it kind of became a whirlwind. Essentially, I started speaking. Well, I was organizing the meetups for a long time and all of these kind of things and doing local things. Um, but then when I started speaking at international conferences, I was I was maybe a bit not greedy, but like, you know, when you're having fun and, and it's fun and, and you know what not. So I started doing a lot of them. Uh, and now I'm scaling down a bit because doing I did through two years of 30 conferences per year, yep. which is a lot, which is I've, kind of. 
did yeah, that for years, it. right? It, no, it's all it's no. It, it, people need to understand too that even if your company is covering uh, your your you know paying for your flights and the hotel and all that, which is fantastic when you have that support, you're giving up weekends. It's your your time. It's yeah. away from family. It's away from everything else. I mean, that's it's a lot. I did that. I did that that you know two to three events a month for years, and yeah. it 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 takes a lot to do that exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly so now i'm switching a bit to other things and whatnot but that's always kind of in a flux but a lot of speaking as well as a lot of like program committee work for kubecon and um, i've done mentorship as well um mm -hmm. like helping young mentorship programs and whatnot and then also the meetups obviously is a big part uh, as well of my contribution now, uh, is uh, did you come over to the uh, to do the MVP summit this last year? The the kind of the smaller version. So this one, something happened. I don't know who was the one who made up with this, but it was at the same time as KubeCon Europe. Yeah, you know, and I've as heard a that CNCF from a couple of people. Yeah. I know <laughs> exactly. I know. And as a CNCF ambassador, uh, and I was um, I was doing something. I think I was speaking as well or managing. I don't know. I always do something. So I was like, okay, I am already settled in. I'm booked and I have to go there. And it would have actually been my first in-person MVP summit, yeah. which is why I was very sad to have to make that choice. But luckily this year, MVP summit in the coming spring one is one week before KubeCon Europe. So this time I'll make it for the first time for the in-person one. I know there's a few people that were uh, that had made extended plans over in Europe. So to go early for that and do some community activities and and then participate in the conference and now they've cut all the community stuff so they could be over in the u.s do the summit and, and over and i say this again and again and again to people if you're know, mvps or, or people that are aware it's like it is the number one perk of being an mvp uh, it there's you get so much value out of again meeting all of your peers meeting the microsoft engineering product teams the marketing teams um i, I mean i i'd say it, it, for any MVP that's that's on the fence of hey, there's other events or spending the money to go over to the U.S., especially I, I realize how expensive it is to travel. Um, it's still such a high value event, and I would highly recommend that if you can, that you should participate. Yeah, I've been hearing exactly the same thing. So my expectations are very high <laughs> and I only expect them to be met, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, I would say that it's it's not so much like the content and there's tons of behind the, like these are all NDA presentations, folks. So sorry, we can't share what we learn. We hear about the roadmap. We provide feedback. I mean, some of them are very hands-on. It's, it's uh, what you don't get, even watching it virtually, what you miss out is are the side conversations, like mm -hmm. hearing the questions your peers are asking, and then out in the hallway, the grilling of the speakers that had to move out of the room to let the next next speaker in, and out in the hallway, the conversations you know around that. So it, it very much is a place where, as an MVP, we can take our list of questions from us personally, from the community, from our companies and really get answers or, or attempt to get answers, but develop relationships with the right contacts inside of Microsoft. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm soapboxing on, you know, for, for folks that are just watching this that are not MVPs, they're like, yeah, what, what value is this to me? No, no, no value to you. <laughs> Except if you know an MVP and you have a question, you can actually provide your question to those MVPs. You might be able to get some answers out of that, but. Yeah, and even if you don't know an MVP, you can always reach out and send a message in LinkedIn, any social medias or whatever. I think um, people would be happy to help, or I can, for example, just pass on the question as well if anyone has yep. anything. That's a great way to do it. Well, I always say, don't be shy to the MVPs. Get to know your local MVPs. And and so you've been an MVP now for three years now? Two or that, three. Two or three. Always, yeah, yeah. I'm around so, that, yeah. So what was your journey to becoming an MVP? How'd you hear about it? Was it something you kind of aspired to do or what was that story? I actually knew a lot of MVPs at the time as well. Um, so I so I so back in the day, so I've done like a 10-year career in tech and tech marketing and other you know, products and whatnot. Um, and within that time I worked at Microsoft, for example, in uh, DX before. So it was involved with a lot of the startups and developer um, engagements and everything. So even back then, I was kind of diving deep into the tech communities. 
uh, from Microsoft, which obviously included the MVPs and all of these. So I already knew a lot of folks from that time. Um, and then, well, I started organizing the meetups, the first CNCF and communities and so forth, which eventually just led me to kind of doing my own contributions as well and everything. So it was, I think it for me, it was felt like a very natural path because I knew mm -hmm. so many MVPs because they're lovely and uh, <laughs> very chatty folk. Yeah. Um, so then, um, it just became kind of like a natural step to do it as well. And so what is, I'm sure now you've had, you know, plenty of people that come forward. You talked about you're already providing mentoring. Do you provide mentoring around the MVP program? Do people come and say, hey, how do I go down that path? And what is your advice to those folks? Uh, well, a lot of people do ask me that in events. The mentorships that I've done have been, for example, part of there's a one like um uh like it's tech mentorship for starting founders for example in the nordics this is what i'm part of the um microsoft wrote about it to the mvp blog as well like mm -hmm. uh, about four different mentors around the globe for example or i also coach early stage startups as well part as part of an accelerator programs for a mm -hmm. few years now because i used to be a professional um like a startup coach as well mm -hmm. back in the day but as far as like mvps or people who want to do tech speaking because people might ask that from a cncf ambassador point of view as well and so forth i just usually tell people do whatever you love like do whatever makes you happy as far as like teaching or somehow contributing to the tech communities around you because there's so many different ways to become an mvp or to be honest to become someone who contributes to the tech communities, which is the most important part, in my opinion, is the contributions, is the kind of, you know, helping other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I know people who have become MVPs, for example, because they do a lot of Stack Overflow, like answering, you know, they just answered every single question for a certain topic. I think that's amazing. I know people from both of the programs who've been in both, who have been um, open source maintainers. And mm -hmm. because they are, you know, part of a project, they help people get started within their open source project which is also a form of educating and kind of talking and so forth. Or people, you know, just do a lot of conferences, write books or whatever it is. So there's so many different ways to get to MVP or one of these, you know, tech um, community memberships. And I think the key is just figuring out what do you like to do? If you like writing blog posts, write blog posts. If you like editing videos, do that. Because whatever you like doing um, is the thing that you're kind of probably like to do for a long time. <laughs> and because right. it requires a bit more effort than just doing one thing uh, once. So uh, that's my number one thing. So find what you like and just, you know, rinse and repeat essentially. You know, I've had conversation with a couple of folks that just said, oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not blogging enough. I was like, well, no, you're, you're out there creating video after video after video. It's like, you don't no. have to ever blog. You're doing a lot of other stuff, but that's what it really kind of comes down to is it's a, a lot for a lot of people that are, uh, you know, number one is you're giving back to the community. That's what it's about. So if you don't enjoy sharing what you're working on, sharing the knowledge that you have, then it's not for you. That's yeah. that's the core of this. Um, but if you're doing that, um, there's no, you're, you're, you, to your exact point, there's no single way. There's, there's not a checklist of things to become an MVP. Um, so it doesn't have to be a broad range of all of those things. You can be like, all I ever do is get into tech community and, or stack overflow and answer questions. That's it. There are people that get their MVP that way. Um, what the volume needs to be the, the area, I mean, that's the black box part of it. Like we, no. we don't know it's, it's Microsoft that makes the decisions, but yeah, there's a place for everybody to get involved. And then, of course, there are the people that do all those things and never get MVP. It's like, well, you're getting the value. You're making connections. You're helping yeah. people. Uh, it's nice to have the award. It doesn't always happen. So, again, it's it's not a checklist. Just because you're in there doing it on a regular basis like doesn't mean guarantee that you're going to get that. But, uh, again, there's a lot of value. There's a lot of benefits. And hopefully – the people that are in there doing it for the right reason, helping people, that's enough. That's plenty. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Because at the end of the day, what matters is that we're helping and sharing our knowledge because that's just like a very, I think, very basic human nice thing to do as well. Uh, and that's the thing that matters is the helping other people and helping the people around you and sharing knowledge. And as long as you're doing that, you should be kind of doing good as well in that way. 
Well, Annie, I really appreciate your your time today, and and maybe maybe we'll see each other at the event. Uh, I'll definitely be there, of course. I we we never know how they organize things, whether we'll you know like be in different areas. Usually, the Azure topics are over in one building, and I'm over in the collaboration, the SharePoint Teams areas, in another building, and so um, we'll we'll see how the layout is for this year. But uh, you know, hopefully, we'll run into each other at some yeah. point. There's going to be a lunch or something where we can catch up or something, uh, likely something. Yeah. Maybe there'll be a big jumbo party where they kind of bring everybody together again, like the old days. So it's, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll have to see what's, what's in the budget, what they're doing, but really appreciate your time. And for folks that want to connect with you, reach out and find you, where are they, where are you most social? Where can people find you? I think LinkedIn, to be honest, is the most certain place, but I am on, um, you know, the old Twitter, which is an X nowadays, or I am on Blue Sky as well and whatever. So, you know, there's, oh, there's like, places. So there's like a dozen of us on Blue Sky now. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I think LinkedIn is the one that I use the most for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, we'll have the links to all of her contacts. You'll be able to find it out, of course, on Buck the Planet blog, out on YouTube and out on the podcast when it all goes live. So. Thanks so much and and hope to see you here in March. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Wow!